That's our furnace and it's currently at uh, about 960 degrees C, almost up to a thousand. So what happens at the minute is when there's been a trauma and there's been a, a, a break, a, a bone is broken, they'll end up in hospital and they will, 90 plus percent of the time, the implement used to repair that break will be a metallic plate with metallic screws. There's a, there's a huge cost to the NHS, for example, because you know, most of those metallic implants need to be removed at this further time. And there are also additional complications, uh, for example, leaching of metallic ions from your implant. Your bones are shaped the way they are because of the mechanical load that's applied to them. So when you have a metallic implant in there, that metallic implant takes all the load. And although the bone will fuse and heal, heal it'll, still be, it'll still be very weak and prone to refracture. So what we want to do is basically, we came up with an idea that if we could create a fracture fixation device that once it's in the body and it's done, it, and it's done its, do and its job, which is to stay in there, maintain its properties long enough, the bone is healed, then to resorb away within the bodies and so it's excreted to the natural pathways of the body. So you don't have to go back in and uh, have a second operation, I create a second trauma site to remove the implant. The, the polymer that we use is already used uh, on a daily basis, for example in sutures. It's a commonly used medical grade polymer and what the fibres that we use to reinforce it are what we produce here at our own labs at Nottingham and they are phosphate based glass fibres. So, if you ever want something and you call, call, then I'll call. Yeah. Polymers are already put in the body and, can also, are, and are currently used in some applications. However, they are not strong enough to take the mechanical load required for higher or bigger, larger bones. For example, polymers alone are used in craniofacial applications, but if you wanted to repair uh, a larger bone, let's say off, off, your, off your arm or your wrist, you need a you need to be able to match those properties of those bone. Polymers alone do not have those properties. So one way of increasing the mechanical properties of the polymer is to reinforce it with a fibre. However, bearing in mind that because these are going to go into the body, the fibre has to be biodegradable. And that's where we get phosphate glass fibres. These are degradable phosphate glass fibres. And we use these fibres to reinforce the polymer in order to increase its mechanical properties. All the, all the in vitro tests that we've done on the phosphate glass show this to be very, uh, a very biocompatible material. You see, it is like everyone. So that's the, just the polymer on its own and this is polymer reinforced with glass fibre and you can see the difference in properties. I mean, look, I can bend that with just two fingers. This one, I can barely bend it with two hands. So that just shows how we can increase the mechanical properties by reinforcing it with a glass fibre. In addition to that, we wanted to show, using Henry's skull here, how pliable and formable and malleable the material is in theatre because ideally when the surgeon was, you know, if the surgeon can have an added property to it where he can take it into theatre and actually mould the material to fit the actual patient application, that's a huge advantage. And as you can see, this shell, this skull here is absolutely, is, is, is very, very pliable to the point where it's even picked up the contours of, of, the, of the skull defect itself. When the polymer breaks down, the, the breakdown products of the polymer are CO2 and water. So once it's metabolised, it'll break down into carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, and water, which we excrete out via the natural pathways. The breakdown products of this phosphate glass fibre are mainly phosphates, calciums, and sodiums. So there you have an additional benefit in the fact that the breakdown products being calcium phosphates can also help to heal the bone, because bone itself there is really is, is a calcium phosphate. It's a calcium phosphate mineral. So if we got a product that's releasing calcium phosphate ions to the site of injury, you're theoretically helping it to heal even faster. So that's an added advantage to having this material. We're, we're close. We've, got, we've been able to match the properties of cortical bone that we've been wanting to do. However, there is an additional 
uh, side to it which we are currently tackling and that is the retention issue. That means ideally uh, depending on the bone of that's been fractured it will take a let's say 8 to 10 or maybe 10 to 12 weeks to heal. So ideally you want your material to be able to maintain its properties especially its mechanical properties for that period of time before it starts resorbing and that really is, is the major challenge we're focusing on now. Then I'll come, bro.